I'll do a bar feedback scan and I'll show you the speed. Uh, Powell, I've, um, uh, Powell and Fora, which I'm sorry if I've pronounced your surname wrong. You ask about the bar feedbacks and uh, the speed of the bar feedbacks. We'll perform a bar feedback and we'll see just what the performance is like. In fact, we'll do it now. So we'll go to share screen and go to desktop. Okay, now I'll do a biofeedback scan. It will be a biofeedback scan that will be in real mode. The outputs will not be connected to anything real. Uh, generator X and the general biofeedback scan. I've selected the preset for the general scan and biofeedback. For all, our prefix, <laughs> for all our presets, we have the notes here on the right. It gives information that is uh, useful for people. Now, if I now go to the control tab, allow generator overwrites, and click on the generator which I'll be doing for scan. It will be the first one, generator number three. All the presets have been loaded for the scan. The scan goes from 20,000 to one point, sorry, to 18 megahertz. Okay, well, you're waiting to see what the speed's like. We'll do it. So I just press scan and we're away. Okay, <clears throat> the scan is now flying along. Now, those of you with a spooky, with a spooky pulse, will know how painfully slow the graph normally moves. But each movement is a sample taken by generator X of the signal that's going through. You can see the frequencies that are going through now. Um, in the time that I've been speaking to you, we've, or we've now doubled the speed from. Um, from 20 kilohertz to 40 kilohertz. That slight delay was when we moved from high resolution to slow resolution mode. The delay ensures that the results are very, very accurate. Now we're going to two decimal places and we are flying. Now during the scan, both the current and the phase angle, which is the VI angle, are being monitored. The values that are here are the displayed values. The measured values are much faster, but there's no benefit in showing each sample as, a, as numbers here, because any screen refresh slows down the scan slightly. And so we choose to give a display every 250 milliseconds. We refresh the display there. In the system tab, we can change some of the advanced options. And here we're currently logging the angle and the current during a biofeedback scan. If we want to have a super fast scan, we unselect that or deselect that. Leave it select though, because after a scan has taken place, you can go back and select angle and current down here and reanalyze the results. Now we are already up to, gosh, what is that, 2.3 megahertz? And so flying along, each frequency increment is one eighth of a percent. Now with Spooky Pulse, we increment at 0.025%. So why do we have to have so, you know, why are we using such a high increment rate? The reason is this. We are not relying on the body producing a response. The body, there's always a delay before the body gives a response, whether it's through a galvanic response, which is your skin having some perspiration on the surface, or whether it's your heartbeat. Generator X is not relying on the body anymore. It's just relying on the cells and the way that the cells behave electrically. And so any results 
even on the very first wave cycle, are known by Generator X. And so the uh, scans are much faster and you don't need to increment with such a small value. Okay, we're, we're, we're well underway now. We're, what is that? This, it's going too fast for me to count. I can't really see. I can pause at any time. Oops. Maybe that wasn't such a bad thing. Good thing, but there we go. That's one, it was um, just under one megahertz. So the scan, there's that little spike there as it turned off and then turned it on again. So that's not a good thing for, for this demonstration. But um, as I say, the load isn't a real load. So um, I'm not, I haven't got any contact leads connected to myself. Um, now while the scan is taking place, it's, it's actually gone past the halfway mark. It's 1.7 megahertz. So I've gone past the cancer frequencies now. So if you had cancer cells across the TENS pads, you'll see little spikes here. But um, they've come and gone. Spooky will show you the results at the end. You can see the graph you know, going up. As the frequency increases, quite often the current increases. Now, because we're in the realms of science, the things to explain do become a little bit more difficult. It's not just a resistor that we're testing, it's a reactive load. The body is not a resistor. The body is predominantly a capacitor, and capacitors at higher frequencies allow more current to pass through them. And so you'll see this increase in the current. But it gets more complex than that. As the frequencies get even higher, the signals bounce off pieces of wire. And you'll also get signals from the Wi-Fi or your TV and other, other electrical sources showing up. And so you'll get little glitches which you're not sure of. There's a threshold setting here. And we have found that a threshold of around 0.4 is sufficient to overlook all the little spikes that are irrelevant. And so only real results are shown. You can change that if you like. If you find that you're doing your scans in an electrically noisy environment, which means there's a lot of Wi-Fi around, or you're close to a mains power outlet, you can increase this threshold. If you do a scan and you find that you're getting too many hits, you can go back and change the threshold and press this analyze button. And you then choose the file that the scan was saved at and reanalyze the scan which was previously performed. It found one hit in the scan and you're going to tell me, and I know, that's when I paused the generator. <laughs> And so it gave a little glitch there, and that was the frequency that it was at that glitch. Now, if I did a reverse lookup, the default is 0.025%. And it'll tell me if there was anything there, any matches in the Spooky2 database for that frequency. And no, there were no matches, which I wouldn't have expected unless, you know, by chance there happened to be a frequency at that point. Now, I got asked by someone, it might be in one of the Q&As later on, is it allowable to have a greater tolerance? This user found that they only got a hit at like half a percent tolerance. Well, even my test scan didn't show any hits at half a percent tolerance. But I would say no. You want to have a high tolerance if you want to scare yourself. It's really telling you things you know, that you don't have. It's going to give a very long report and you're going to be a very unhappy person. So for meaningful results, you do want to keep the tolerance quite narrow. You, you don't want to be having things in the report, information that is irrelevant. You want valuable, useful information. Okay, because I did the scanning using angle as well as current, I can reanalyze results using angle as the parameter. 